This is one of my favorite pastimes is to look at an article from like a decade ago and try to see what it does to match my like what we see and observe today. Because I think this is like a really important life uh, to do. Java for everything. All right. So I don't know which way this article is going, whether we're going positive or negative into things. Uh, the nice part is this is at least not AI generated. Uh, I used to ask interviewers, what's your favorite programming language? The answer was nearly always, I just choose the right language for the job. Dude, I hate that phrase so effing much because everyone says that and they don't actually mean that. They don't. They don't. They don't because every single time, what they mean is the language I'm most familiar with, which is pretty much just one language every single time. This is why there's literally React in video games for menus. Kind of true, but C-sharp, though, bro. They literally embed a JavaScript engine into a video game to have a UI. Like, that's just the wrong choice. Duh. Does anyone ever deliberately pick the wrong language? Like I said, people do not pick the right tool for the job, okay? This is literally not picking the right tool for the right job, okay? At all. This is deliberately picking the wrong tool for the job. Deliberately. But does it work? Of course it works. You can, dude, you could hammer in a nail with a shoe. That doesn't mean a shoe's a good hammer. Uh, I love ducks. No, you don't. If the interviewee gave an answer at all, it was like, I'm most familiar with language X, which didn't answer my question either. At the time, I would, uh, I, I would myself have to reply something like, I like Python best because it makes me happy to program in it, but I only use such and such a, a situation. The rest of the time, I use XYZ. Imagine trying to ask any modern learning programmer within the last four years if they have w more than one language. I feel like at this point, people exclusively learn JavaScript and then apply JavaScript to everything. Hey, Python's great. Python is great when you use it for Pythony things. Have you ever needed to make a quick graph, right? Have you ever just needed to make a quick graph? Matplotlib is fantastic. Yesterday, I figured out I'd write myself a useless compiler version manager for the Zig. I could have used Zig, but it came to the conclusion that Perl was better for the job. <laughs> like, Python does a great time when you just need to, like, when you want to matplotlib something really, really quick, right? It's fairly absurd that there are people right now, probably in this chat, that if they had to create a histogram, they would actually take React, get charts.js React, have Vite to build the program, create the effing chart, create a backend to deliver the data, serve down the data into a browser, then right click on the image and go copy image. Like that's what would happen. This would really happen in this chat right now. Does it work? Yes. Dude, that sounds like a stretch. It is not a stretch, okay? This is not a stretch. Boom, full stack engineering. <laughs> Boom, full stack engineer, let's go. Hey, Eva, Prime, bro, that sounds clinically insane. Of course it sounds clinically insane, but you got to understand that this is what happens when people only know one way of doing things. They will take everything they can do. I know that guy. I know that guy too. I know that guy completely. Uh, about a year ago, though, I started uh, to form a strange idea that Java is the right language for all jobs. I pause here for a while while you vomit in your mouth. I can't believe they thought Java was terrible even in 2014. Okay. 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 So Java was already out of sight by that point? I think so. I think in 2014, I was doing uh, about seven months of 2014 was spent writing Groovy. Huh? Who here spent seven months of 2014 writing Groovy? Yeah, Java won't send her a div. Java won't send her no div, but I could send her this div in your mouth. Got him! Uh, the r this rests on the argument. Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on, hold on. We need somebody right away. We need somebody right away. We just got a new D's nuts joke just dropped. New D's nuts joke just dropped, everybody. Let's see. If you think using an ORM is a good idea, please respond to this post so I can follow you. All right, here we go. I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to respond. Uh, the real question should be... Can you center a div? Let's see if we can get Cash to respond. If Cash can respond, okay. Guys, can you please go like this? Don't comment on it. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. Just just all we got to do is get the guy to respond. So just like it so it shows up, okay? Okay? That's it. Don't be dumb. Chat, I'm relying on you not to be stupid here because we're going to deeze nuts this guy, okay? Okay? That's what we're going for. All right. So don't be stupid. I'll come back to this. 
This rests on the argument that what you perceive to be true does not match reality, and that's never a popular approach. But let me explain anyways. Python really is my favorite language, and it truly makes me happy when I code in it. DHH mentioned, is this a DHH mentioning moment? It pushes the happy spot in my head. It matches pseudocode so well that it's genuinely pleasure to work with. Okay, fine argument. Like, that's the thing is that I think this is a perfectly valid argument for Python. It makes me happy, and I like to do it, right? No, Python, I have always said Python is simultaneously, if there's a tier list for, for languages, and there's S tier at the top and F tier at the bottom, Python, I forget how Python looks. It, it, it looks like, its logo looks like 69, okay? I know it's close to 69. It's both at the bottom and at the top simultaneously, right? It actually occupies two spots, right? It occupies two spots at the same time. Years ago, I read Bruce Eccles' Influential Strong Type versus Strong Testing. By the way, if you rely on testing to avoid types, you're crazy. Uh, in, the, uh, let's see. in it, he argued that static typing, what he calls strong typing, is one of the many facets uh, of program correctness, and that if you're going to check the other facets, such as algorithm and logic with unit tests, then the types will also get checked. So you may, uh, let's see, you may as well go for dynamic typing, the benefits, uh, benefit from its advantages. What? What the fuck? What? What the fuck? That is my response to this, okay? That, th th this is a crazy, this is a crazy argument. Bruce used Python to illustrate his code, and that clinched it. I decided that I would, from then on, write everything in Python. Unfortunately, I was halfway through a large Java program at work, but my coworker and I agreed that it should have been written in Python, and perhaps one day we'll get good, uh, get a good excuse to rewrite it all that way. Several things changed my mind 180 degrees in less than a year. Okay, I'm excited about that. I'm excited. Let's see, let's let's find the sphincter clutch. Uh, one, let's see, dude, by the way, I'm loving this article. This article is as relevant today as it has ever been. This article is absolutely effing incredible. Several things changed my mind 180 degrees in less than a year. At one company, I wrote a simulator that allowed me to run my Java services without a fully functional site. In this simulator, I ran scripts that tested various scenarios, including failures. These scripts, I decided to use uh, JavaScript, primarily because it, it's included in Java 6. What? What? What the fuck? What? And secondarily, because many people know it, I reasoned that a scripting language would allow us NQA to write tests easily. An intern, Justin Labar, argued that we should simply use Java. The simulator is in Java, so why not write the scripts in it too? I was sitting right there, and we all know it. I went ahead with JavaScript, which focused, which forced me to write various code to bridge the two. It also meant the stack traces were much harder to read, since they didn't point to a line in the script that was being executed. QA never wrote any tests, so there you go. This was the great, this is a great take away my goodness how many companies have you ever worked at that tells you oh you should write it in this language like if you're writing a library and they're like oh write it in this language because that way other people can contribute to the library who has heard that lie look into my eyes for a second okay hey green screen gone no one will ever contribute and if you happen to be one of the five people whose lives did not match up with that experience, you are not disproving this statement, okay? I hate this. I hate to tell you this, but you are such an exception and your case so exceptional that when you say this, people will be completely shocked and flabbergasted that you lived a life such that you built a utility that anybody else at work actually contributed to and didn't just pile on heaps of Jira tickets slash Slack messages asking for features. Dude, ridiculous. It's very close to a truism and sweet. It is. Dude, it's real ass shit. Good coders don't care what lang anyways. It's true. Overall, we gained nothing from JavaScript and Justin had been right. At the same time, company, we stored our, lo uh, our, our logs in JSON format, which is a great idea, by the way. And let's see, and a coworker wrote a Python program called Logcat to parse the logs and generate the standard columnar output with many nice features and flags, including a binary search uh, for timestamps. Oh, that's nice. On our groceries, let's see, on our groceries, my personal project, we needed something similar, and I suggested, again, to use Python. My partner, Dan Collins, suggested Java, since it's right there, and we know it, and it's fast. He wrote it, and he was right. It's blazingly fast. I've since compared the Python logcat to Java 1, and the latter is about 10 times faster. Whatever time was saved by the developer when writing the 
uh, Python code, if any, were lost many times over as the dozens of users had to wait 10 times longer when they finished the... Yep, yes, yes, and yes. Okay, so this is truly the picking the right tool for the job. If you're doing large amounts of string processing, pick a language that's better at string processing. Just use Rust. Dude, hold on. Somebody, I think somebody might have messed up this. Did somebody mess this up? Don't worry. We still have a chance. We still have a chance. Hey, we still have a chance. All right, Cash, come on. I'm hoping Cash. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, Cash. Come on, Cash. Come on, Cash. By the way, I'm using Zig right now. Zig is great. All right, come on, Cash. We're going to get Cash. Don't worry. We're going to get Cash. Let's see. Finally, I went to write a simple program that put... By the way, okay, so back to this one for a quick second. Like, even if you don't use Rust and you use Go, right? You use Go because you're like, hey, I'm I, Go is easy and I can just do it. I can just do it correctly and Go is easy. I'm just saying, when you're building a program whose primary purpose is to read and process strings, choosing a slow language will eventually hit a wall at some point. Now, it may not happen right away. You know what I mean? It may not happen right away because you're testing small files, but somebody's going to come with like a 10 megabyte file and they're going to have to wait 30 seconds for your crappy because you chose JavaScript or Python. It's super slow. Just don't do that. Just don't do it. Just, just write it in Go. Write it in Rust. Write it in Zig. Write it in Java. Just write it in anything but languages that are slow when it comes to really large string processing. It always happens every single time. TSC is the greatest crime against humanity right now, okay? TSC is the greatest crime against L-Take. Why? Hit me. Hit me with why. I thought, we, I thought we currently lived in a world where every single JavaScript tool is being rewritten in not JavaScript because it's such an effing nightmare. I know 10 megabyte is tiny. I'm giving just a simple example. But as you can see, every single JavaScript thing has been rewritten now into not JavaScript. TSC, the tri TypeScript compiler? Yes, TSC, the TypeScript compiler. You got to tell me why. You've double, you've double L taked me. So you got you to gotta show me why. I'm, I'm, hey, I'm willing. Bad take. Bad take. Bad take. L take. Hit me with why. Don't worry. I, I'm not upset. I could, hey, this could be a bad take. I don't think it is. Dude, L, it's going to be L take and then it's going to be lovely take. RS, RS pack and RS build. So cool. Been using it. It's such a massive speed up. Yes, it is such a massive speed up. Right? Why are you using Zig? I like Zig. That's why. I'm using Zig because I like Zig. I mainly use Rust, but if you are, let's see, but if you are used to using, let's see, to JavaScript and the priority is to get the string processing done and then make more sense to get the string processing done. But yeah, I agree with you that if you're already using Rust, then just do it. See, I, I just generally disagree with the statement is that's why I said don't use Rust, use Go. Anyone can write a Go program. If you can program at all and you know you're about to do a lot of string processing, just pick a language that's fast at it, right? Anybody can write Go. Write Go. Anybody. Anybody can write Go. I'm not saying... You, you don't even have to write in Zig, okay? Don't even worry about Zig. Just just go. It's already fast. All right? Anyway, just pick the right tool for the job. I like Zig. Right now, I'm on, a, I'm on a big Zig kick, and Zig has just been absolutely fun. Zig has been absolutely a great time. I strongly recommend Zig. Great experience. Zig is almost as easy as Go, Zig, okay, so this, uh, by the way, so there's C, which is really, really difficult. Then there's Go, which is really, really easy. And in between is Zig. Zig, you get all the control of C, and you get a lot of the niceties of Go. Right now, I have been really enjoying Zig, like shockingly a large amounts of time. Like, I really like it. I actually can't believe I like Zig this much. I cannot believe it. I've actually liked Zig quite a bit. All right, this is a big argument against Java is that it's verbose, perhaps, but so what? Uh, I suppose the real argument is that it takes longer to write code. I doubt this very much true after the first 10 minutes. Sure, you have to write public, static, void, main, string, args, but how much time does that take? Sure, you have to write this instead of that, but in the bigger scheme of things, is that so long? How many total minutes out of the days is that? Two? Wait, what? No, not even two? That's like a second? It's like nothing? And in Python, the code is more realistically, uh, the code more realistically looks like this anyways. Yeah. If it doesn't, then you have bigger problems. Undocumented Python programs are horrendously difficult to maintain. By the way, this is facts on facts on facts on facts. This is facts on facts on facts on facts. Okay. Python can be extremely difficult to read other people's Python. And a lot of that has to do with the idea that due to Python's terseness, because Python is so, you you can do so much in Python in so little time, in so little code, it, it, it 
it, it is both super impressive and also super difficult. Uh, the problem is that programmers perceive mindless work as painful and time consuming, but the reality is never so bad. Here's a quote from a forum about language design. It really sucks when you have to add type declarations for blindly, blindingly obvious things, such as foo x equals new foo. It, I mean, I, I agree. I actually agree with the statement, generally speaking. I find it just really dumb. Again, but this is, again, this is 2014. Remember, 2014 had a lot of things wrong with it, right? 2014 has a lot of things wrong with it. Whereas in, in, this, beautiful, in this beautiful world we live in now, I can do something like this. Let's see if we have this. I can go like this. I can go var foo equals, uh, what is it? It's um, sized dot position dot vec2. And foo is a vector two. Like, I love that. I love that it just knows what to do. All right, Java fixed this issue, yes. But modern languages and modern a type inference, you don't have to worry about that, right? And I like that. Implicit is very, very nice. I do agree with this, though. It is annoying having to write this every single time for every single last thing. I get it. No, actually, typing foo one extra time does not really suck. It's three letters. Uh, the burden is massively overstated because the work is mindless, but it's pretty uh, trivial. Programmers will cringe at writing some kind of command dispatch list. So they go off and write some introspecting auto-dispatch cleverness, but that takes longer to write and will surely confuse future readers, whoever... Yes, I, I, I do generally agree that often I will put everything into this. Like I'll, I'll generally try not to get too clever with my code, and even if it's a touch more verbose, it's really, 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 really simple, right? That's terrible syntax. What's terrible syntax? I'm so torn on ifs like this. I, I think that you're torn on ifs like this is because you've been told you should never do that. But what's the reason why you should never do that, right? Like, what's the reason? Yeah, no, no, exactly. But, but the problem with this is there's so much indirect magic going on here, right? This is exceptionally indirect magic going on here and it just requires you to like hop over to wherever the places are that manipulates it and it's annoying right and so we accept the indirect thing as being really easy right we you know like i'm, I'm just being real here we all accept exhaustive tech, uh, type checking though yeah i mean but some languages allow you to do exhaustive type checking right like real talk uh you can uh, yes the, the equals is weird chat yes we all agree the equals is weird this is python you just get over it right get over it you're fine um the exhaustive type checking you can do go doesn't that's fine but zig does so if i switched on some sort of you know right and i i switched on something actually if i go like this uh var uh pos equals sized pos right and hit him with a pos x or a row Right, and then I could have one, I could have two, and I could have else, right? And if I don't put in everything, it gives me a warning because I'm not doing it because I'm not doing all of that. I actually really like this argument. Generally speaking, I do like all of that. I do like exhaustive checking. But again, I think we've just been trained to look at this and say, oh, this is bad. But I don't think I can get, I don't think most people can tell me why it's bad. Exhaustive, sure, you're right. I like exhaustive. Easy to read equals good. It is very, because it doesn't scale. Yeah, but what is this scaling you're doing? It's bad. At, I know, but most people's big scale is four items. I think that's where I have this problem is we all make up this idea that it doesn't scale well, and you literally have four items in it. And there are a few times where you actually have like 50 items. And if you have 50 items, yeah, I agree with you. A map is probably a better place to be. I'm on your team. Elegance is seducing, but sometimes it can be rather abstract. Yeah. Hash map moment. Yes. Then we can hash map. Right. And I feel like people often just reach for scaling things. They're like, oh man, this is going to end up being like 50 different ones. And you're like, is it 50 different ones or is it three? You know what? If it's three, let's leave it as three. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. Oh, it's four. Four still fine. Four is not a big deal. Right. Yeah. Fine. As long as it's not repeated. Even then. How many times should you repeat yourself? And how close can you do rep uh, repeats? People often reach for abstraction to avoid all repetition. And then you get into these hyper dry situations. And then you get into these really confusing functions with like Boolean flags to try to like make things change. It's just refactor later. Just calm down. A high school dropout hash map enjoyer here. Yeah, and I think that's fine. Uh, so they'll go off and write some introspecting auto-dispatch cleverness, but it takes longer to write and will surely confuse re future readers who will wonder how the heck revert gets, uh, call ever gets called. 
Yet the programmer will incorrectly feel as though he saved himself time. This is a trap of dynamic languages. It feels like you're being more productive, but aside from the first 10 minutes of a new program, you're not. Just write the stupid dispatch manually and get on with real work. Generally speaking, you will save a lot of your time and, and effort just doing it that way until you know you don't need to. Until you know you have to change. Aside, I'm on the wrong side of different decisions. Uh, uh, the one uh, to use Vim for code editing. I feel very uh, efficient when using Vim. I love this article. Uh, as code flies around the terminal. And I feel sluggish when using Eclipse. I just justify my choice with this efficiency argument. But surely all my gains are lost the first time I have to look up who calls a particular function or when I have to look up methods of an object manually. That has changed now that LSPs are around. I recognize that I'm wrong on this one in the same way that dynamic language apologists are about their choice. It's an older one. It's an older one. This is from a long time ago, okay? So why are dynamic languages ever chosen? If you and I have a contest to write a simple blogging... Uh, system and you've been using say python you'll have something interesting in 30 minutes using pickling or whatnot and it'll take me two days to build something with my squeal many language choices are based on trivial contests like these but after two weeks of development when we both have to add a feature mine will take at most as long as yours and i won't be spending any time figuring out how to get a system to handle so many users or tracking down why some obscure if clause breaks because you misspelled the name of a function or figuring out what the heck this request parameter contains I think these arguments are starting to break down just just simply due to the advances of language writing. Our language writing just has vastly changed since this time to now. So I'm actually curious if he's, if if this this whoever this is, do we have a name? We don't have a name up there at least. I wonder if this if this argument has changed cuz I I think I like the funny part is is that he started off in a funny way a way that I agreed with, and I think he's actually going towards an argument that I, I greatly disagree with. The classic hacker disdained for bondage and disciplined languages is short-sighted. The needs of large, long-lived, multi-programmer projects are just different than a quick work you have to do for yourself. Source. Damn. Can't get that source. I generally agree with his argument in archetype, meaning that some languages scale better as, as, programs, go, as programs get bigger. Like, this is my same argument for why I think React isn't that great. I think everything that you choose has a complexity curve, right? React at some point starts off simple, and then as you add more and more people and more stuff, eventually there's this untenable curve that starts happening to where you say, F it, let's rewrite, right? TypeScript has the same thing. You know, uh, Rust is going to have something similar. Go is going to have something similar. And you just don't know these curves of the language, and the curves are going to be based on experience. They're going to be based on how many times you've done this, how many ways you're able to avoid it. But they all exist. They all exist. And at some point, you get to this like untenable mess of code. And it's extremely hard not to get here. It's really hard not to get here. And so I agree with this general argument, which is just because it feels good right away does not mean it's a good choice. Yeah, how far can you go with the fuck up? I think that's a really good one. Will DHH disagree with your React take? No, because I think that he, I think he will generally agree with that take overall, meaning that scaling is always the hard part. No, no language should be judged by the first 10 minutes. I agree completely with this article. It should be, it should be judged by like the midsection. Like, if you mess up and you need to change something, can you monkey patch it? Can you, are you able to, to move stuff around? Are you able to successfully like, override some bad architectural decisions in a bunch of edge cases? And I find that certain languages really struggle with this, and certain languages are really good, and some languages make you effectively, they like, force you into doing it all the time. So Rust wins that easy. Well, Rust is horrible if you even have the slightest architectural oopsie-daisy. See, I think Rust is actually one of the worst offenders. I think Rust has one of the best starting up times. And I think as projects get bigger, I think Rust becomes more difficult. You toss in one single lifetime, you may have to change 900 different functions. It can become, I think, I think Rust has a scaling problem. Twitter recently tripled their search speed by switching their search engine from Ruby to Java. A year earlier, Joel uh, Spol uh, Spolsky tweeted, Dig, 200 million pages views, 500 servers. Stack Overflow, 60 million pages, five servers. What am I missing? I mean, Ruby on Rails is just slow. You don't, you literally don't use Ruby on Rails because it's fast. You use it because it, you're trying to bypass the speed of the language for speed of completing things, right? 
Spolsky, Dick, 200 million. Uh, let's see, Stack Overflow. Uh, what am I missing? That's the PHP factor. C sharps are C sharps are fairly fast, right? How much is a language versus optimization uh, during refactoring, though? I think as you get into anything big, your language choice really starts to matter. C sharps great. I don't really like it, but it's great. Stack Overflow uses Aspa.net, so you can complain all day about public static void main, but ha let's see, but having fun setting up 500 servers. Oh, oh, the rear view mirror. Uh, the downsides of dynamic languages are, are real, expensive, and permanent. It's still kind of that way. Like JavaScript is going to always be significantly slower. We've tried many times to make JavaScript fast. I've done a lot of things to make it fast. And even when I write the most optimized JavaScript against just regular ass Go, Go is still like 10x faster. It's just like impossible. It's very hard to make JavaScript fast. Uh, and what about the unit testing argument? If you have to unit test your code anyways, what does static typing buy you? Well, for one thing, it buys you speed and a lots of it, but also writing and maintaining unit tests takes time. Facts on facts. Most importantly, the kinds of bugs that people introduce most often aren't the kind of bugs that unit tests catch. I feel like this is some level of broken idea here. I mean, hopefully you only, you, your unit tests are written in such a way that anytime you manipulate something, it should hopefully catch this. He's spewing, yeah. I, I was like, agreeing. He had me in the first half. It's the second half that I'm really... Anyone unit test still? Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolute. Like, dude, if you don't unit test, I do think you're an idiot. Um, sorry. All right. I just made some changes so they may p fail. There you go. I still have my 28 ones that are very important for me to test. Test. Sorry. I think unit testing is really smart. Here's the deal. I, I'm going to give you... I'm going to give you a extremely blazingly hot take. If you don't need to unit test, you are building nothing complicated. Anybody can do what you're doing. Nice clap, agree. Because he he here's my take on this. If you build something that's complicated, to get the complicated thing correct requires many iterations. And unit testing is a very fast way to do that. So it almost... It almost requires a unit test just to drive it to completion. Like if you had to do a pathing algorithm, pathing algorithms aren't something you just get right your first try. They're very, very hard. I, personally, I got mine right the first try. You wouldn't get it. But generally speaking, it's very hard to get pathing algorithms right the first try, right? Should beginners do unit testing? A little humble break, just a little one. Asserts and unit tests and integration tests uh, in varied measures. I actually, I, I love asserts now. I've been loving asserts. I've been loving asserts so much. I don't know if this will work just because I was like, again, I was in the middle of uh, trying to rewrite everything. Yeah, there you go. See, yeah, I was in the middle of doing some sort of rewrite. So sorry, it doesn't work. Uh, get checkout head tilde one. But the fact that I can simulate hundreds of rounds of this thing running and it doesn't break Hell yeah. I love that. What the hell? Where the hell was I at? I love that. That I can just, I can simulate hours of, t of time playing without any sort of problems. I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. Anyway, so here's my new approach. Do everything in Java. Don't be tempted to write some quick hack in Python because you can't copy and paste code from uh, other projects in your primary programming language. Well, the funny thing is, is that if you want to prototype something, it's a great way to find edge cases. So I disagree with point one already. Um, if you can whip up something in a day to see what it's like, and you don't want to have to do something in a bigger language or a harder one, I don't see why not. Uh, it may feel faster to develop, but that's an illusion. The actual time saved is small, though admittedly annoying. Uh, it's one more language, platform, and set of libraries that I and my coworkers have to learn to master. This is a fairish statement. Oh, God, why Java? It's 2014. <laughs> I, what I want you to do is I want you to take what they're saying and I want you to apply this word JavaScript to it, okay? This is literally JavaScript argument 101. If you haven't noticed, this argument is the exact same argument that happens today. It's identical. It's an identical argument. Obama commented on your tweet, let's go, Obama. Let's go, Obama. Uh, okay, dang it. Dang it. We still, we still haven't got him to respond. We still haven't got him to respond. Obama. Thanks, Obama. Got him. I agree. It's fun to develop in Python. I love it. When I'm writing a Sudoku solver, I reach for Python. But, it, but it's the wrong tool for anything larger. And it's the wrong tool for code of any size written to pay because you're doing uh, your employer a disservice. 
Every project, I mean, to be completely fair, every project I've ever done something in Java has been rewritten to Go. Like every project that I've ever been a part of, it has become Go, even in 2013. I'm even taking this extra, let's see, this to an extreme and using Java for shell scripts. Okay, that's crazy. I found that anything other than a simple wrapper shell scripts eventually grow to the point where I'm looking up some arcane syntax for removing some middle element from an array in bash. Okay, so but this is the bash rule. You quit using bash when you have to use arrays. Like this is the classic one, and I thought I made up this rule, but even ba uh, bad cop agrees with this exact rule, which is when you get to arrays. Hey, no, but you agree with this. Bad cop, you agree with this, though, which is when you get to arrays... That's usually that's usually means you're you you pushed bash to the limit. Now you can do that, you can do that, because you you are bad cop, but I'm not bad cop, and you don't want me not bad cop writing that kind of bash. All right, arrays, you're way too deep. Good cop. Uh, what a crappy language. Wrong tool for the job. Write it in Java to start with. If shelling out to run commands is clumsy, write a utility function to make it easy. Um. I actually do. I actually fully just. Dis this is funny because this is actually, he's actually defeating his own argument, which is using the right tool for the job. But I guess his argument is screw the right tool, always use Java because it is the right idea, which a doesn't scale into the future, which it doesn't because now everyone makes fun of Java. No one uses Java. Uh, B JavaScript has gotten a lot faster than it was in 2014, and so a lot of the things, it is significantly faster. You can do quite a bit. Right, you can do quite a bit. Uh, screw the right tool. Just always use Java. The problem with this mentality is it's the same mentality. No one uses the right tool for the job. I've also written a Java launcher shell script that allows us to write this at the top of the Java program. Let's go. I can make the Java program executable and drop the .java extension. The script uh, strips the headers, compiles and caches the class file, and it runs and results with the specified jars. It provides one of the big advantages of Python, the lack of build scripts for one-off programs. The focus on a single language has an interesting side effect. It encourages me to improve my personal library of utility functions, Team 10 Jar above, since my efforts are no longer split across several languages. For example, I wrote a library that contains image processing routines. They're both faster and higher quality than anything you can find in Java and Python. This is where things really fall apart because Python has the ability to go to C. And typically Python for these kind of things are actually really fast because Python just imports C library. C library goes burr. NumPy is crazy fast. That's because NumPy is crazy fast. That's why. This is what Python's so good at yourself, right? So this is where this is where things get off the rails. But again, let's not put on the mentality of yesteryear. Put on the mentality of today and think about how many things that are written in JavaScript because you write it in JavaScript. I was about to say something, but we're not going to start a war. We're not going to start a war. I'm just saying people try to solve all problems and make this easier. Like right now, Dino and Bun are trying to make it so that you can write TypeScript easier. Right? Like they're, it's, it, it's, to me, part of it is copium. It's like you're literally coping with the fact that you have to write a, uh, a transpiler for your interpreted language. So therefore, we wrote you the transpiler for free. And it feels... Copium ish. It's this. That's what this is. Uh, there remains the question of why choosing Java specifically out of the set of compiled statically typed languages. The advantages of C and C, slight performance gains, embeddability, embeddability, uh, graphics libraries don't apply to my work. C sharp is nice, but not cross platform enough. Scala is too complex. Uh oh. Uh-oh, and other languages like D and Go are too new to be bet on on my work. That's fair. That's uh, this, this last one's actually a really fair statement. Uh, never bet on the D is kind of my general take. Never bet on the D. It just never feels good. No matter how much you think it's going to, it never does. Um, all right, not worth it. Just not worth it. Let's see. When I tell people that I write everything in Java, they look horrified. One friend had visibly a look of disgust. But you know, Java's pretty nice language. And when my code compiles, which is often the first time, slight flex, it usually also runs correctly. I don't have that peace of mind. By the way, does that? Is there any other language that we could say that? Does anybody say that about any other language? I mean, we're all laughing at someone saying that for Java, right? Like, how silly is that? That someone would say that about a programming language, am I right? 
Am I right about saying that if it compiles, it probably runs correctly the first time, right? Isn't that just so stupid? Like, no one would actually say that ever for any reason. I don't have that peace of mind with any other language. Gosh, that's so weird that you would say that. Java just works like a horse and is useful across a very broad range of applications. It's, it's almost like that when you get so good at one specific language, you accidentally write programs more correct. It's almost like when you do the same thing over and over again, you accidentally get good at it. And maybe, just maybe, the copium about the language isn't actually the thing. Maybe. Maybe it's not Rust. Maybe it's the fact that you obsessively read everything about the documentation to get good at the language. You figured out every last part about it, and then you went and programmed it. Maybe. Maybe crank and hog and hog and crank. I hate to tell you this. Maybe it's not the language itself. Truth problems, chat, and shambles. And then there's also Python, which Python can be very, very difficult. Okay, again, we'll go back to the old Python. Okay. Then there's also Python. Python, very hard. Very, very hard here. Okay. Fake facts. Fake facts. First time chatter. This guy is really good at Java, and he's very good at what he does in Java. Just not seeing that people are just uh, as good in other languages. Yes. I mean, I think there's some languages that genuinely make it harder. I do think 2014, 2014 JavaScript or Python most certainly made it harder. Neither of them had any form of type hinting unless if you used IntelliJ. If you used IntelliJ, then you could use doc comments, right? Well, at least for JavaScript, you could. I'm not sure if you could use other things, but you could use it inside of JavaScript. You could use uh, doc comments back in 2012, which made it pretty nice, right? It made it pretty easy to use. Um, you could do it for Python as well and for Python too. Yeah. And so it did make things pretty like IntelliJ was just really, really good and made it easier to use any of these languages. Uh, this argument's so interesting because I feel this argument in my soul. And what I mean by that is that I feel like we could just re say this. There's going to be a huge amount of people that like this tweet because they like the tweet because it's true to them. Okay. And this is just what happens because they weren't here. Right. They just, they just, they just wanted it so bad to work out, right? They just want it so bad to work out. And they're just like, yes, yes, yes. Okay, code girl, get out of here. You're in the chat. All right, let's see if we got that centering of a div thing. Did we get the centering of a di uh, div thing? All right, let's get that centering of a div thing. And if we got the centering of the div, let's use it. Oh, come on. It didn't happen. Dang it. Dang it. I just want, oh, well, I'll take a picture of it later. All right, hey, the name is don't hold on so tightly. You know what I mean? Don't hold on so tightly. Just actually try to think about the best tool for the job. I know it does exist. It will exist. You will be much happier in your life if you do it. Just try. Try to learn a lot of things. There's a little bit of pain in that approach. And sure, you may slow down. And sure, 10 years of programming may be kept. You may not be as good as all of your contemporaries who just choose one language at that time and chooses one single tool. Sure, they will probably be better than you. But generally speaking, I think that you will be better overall. And in 10 years, you will be much, much better because you've gained many perspectives. You never just simply invest your identity and everything you did didn't become a, a library, right? You're not React Andy. You're not known as the guy that can amazingly do everything in react right like i did you want to be that guy i don't know if you want to be that guy you know what i mean don't do that react andy's not a great place to be the name is the react andyogen